ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. This is Diane Andrews in black and white. The issues you don't want to talk about. The arts and entertainment you need to know. And now here's your host, Diane Andrews. Hi. Thank you, out there, audience. My name is Diane Andrews. I'm the host of Diane Andrews in Black and White. And I want to thank you for being with us today, outside audience, inside audience, and YouTube audience. We're being seen all over the world on YouTube. We look at the statistics. In fact, I just had a show with someone from Baghdad, Iraq, a Shiite Muslim. So keep on watching us, and we'll keep doing those kinds of shows you want to do. I uh, just started a series of All About Kids which I did a show on that a couple of weeks ago. But I started a series in October, my entrepreneurial series. And in that I had uh, the CPA from Falk and Winkler, and I had a guy, Herman Lanier, who came in from Seattle, Washington, for his Lanier candies. And I tell you, if you haven't tried it, you have to. He's a good diver of brittle. So today, I wanted to talk to somebody who's number one in America. And so who would that be in display advertising or billboards, digital? It would be Lamar Advertising. Wow. And thanks hey. for being here with me. It is my pleasure. Thank you. This is Garth Roberts. He's the VP and General Manager of Lamar Advertising. I think you started there in 1991. Yes. And, uh, but Lamar started in 1902 with Charles Lamar and another guy. But Charles Lamar ended up getting the company, That's right? That's right. It was actually a very, very interesting story. Charlie Lamar lost a coin toss <laughs> and ended up with the billboard company. So. By losing a By coin toss. By losing. So this was supposed to be the bad thing. That's correct. That's correct. And that it's shows you story. what marketing and advertising can do for a company and his own company and advertising. Absolutely. Because he took it to the next level. And you're, again, number one in America. And have a franchise in Canada. You work uh, in Canada we ha now. Yeah, so? we, we have um, our interstate logos, the food, lodging, and yeah. uh, and uh, motel, hotel. And you, you're at the airports too, aren't you? Do you all uh, We the have just branched off into that. That's yeah, I correct. I thought I read that. You uh, did. Yeah, you did. so uh, they're getting bigger and better. And I, I told him you're number one in America, right? He said, yeah, for right now. Well, the U.S. But, yeah, the but U.S. We're, we're not not all the, the Americas, but the U.S. But they're working on to be number one. Uh, what a brilliant idea in 1902. Yeah, it's uh, the, and I'll give you the, the quick version yeah. of the story. Uh, Charlie Lamar had a partner, mm -hmm. and they bought an opera house. Well, they spent all of their money on renovations mm -hmm. and uh, were ready to open and had no advertising budget. Mm -hmm. So what did they do? Knowing everybody in town, uh, they went to Joe's house, Susie's house, Uncle Tom's house, and put little billboards, small signs in, in their yards right. to promote the opera house. And as the opera house grew and the billboards became more plentiful, um, as partners, sometimes you, you, you see visions different ways. They decided to remain friends, but to dissolve this partnership. And uh, so they flipped a coin. Yeah. And the winner was to get the opera house, and Charlie Lamar lost. Oh, my goodness. So, so the opera house is long gone, I'm sure. Uh, it is indeed. It and is. so he had the business with the vision, and he that's had the right. vision for the business. That's correct. Which was so very smart. And that's really sometimes our businesses grow out of necessity. When you see a need, they had no money. So how can I get this done? How can I get the that's word right. out? That's and right. that's really what advertising is about. How do I brand myself? Correct. You know, I was with IBM before. I was a, uh, an executive with IBM, and I used to be in marketing. When we talk about in marketing research for IBM, what we would call customers, we would do surveys and see, are we selling the right thing? I don't know if you know, when I got my MBA, I, we did a case study on Coca-Cola. You know, the Coke we have today, about 15 years ago, I think they changed the original recipe, recipe of Coca-Cola. And it was going down the tubes fast. And what they did, they had a focus group, and they let them taste the new Coke they had developed versus Pepsi Cola. But what they forgot, let, let's see about the old Coke in here too. So they liked the new Coke they had developed better than Pepsi. But when it hit the market, they didn't like that new Coke better than the old Coke, and they left that out of the formula in That's their focus right. group. 
That's so in focus groups, when you call, it's part of ma marketing strategy. You call mm -hmm. people in and you uh, have them test a product, or you may see it about politicians. They do focus groups a lot on. Or you have a candid room where you talk to people, asking questions, and see which way which way they're going. A, a lot of people, I call it advertising and, and marketing is what I call this show. But really, we're talking about advertising today, which is a part of an entire marketing plan. Correct. That's just a segment. What would you say that your advertising does for a customer? I'll tell. I'm a customer. Two, two yes, you are. I have you. with Lamar Advertising. And I appreciate this one. Troy Robert, uh, Roberts did really looks good, our sales manager over there. Yes, uh, it's a great question. Um, Troy, I called it. Did I say Troy? You said Troy. <laughs> yeah, I meant Troy. <laughs> Troy was just on my show. <laughs> no, That's Troy. It. But um, if, if, if I had to think of one of the most powerful benefits of outdoor advertising, mm -hmm. and let's face it, all advertising is, is good. Right. Even bad advertising right. is good. Get your name out and there. And we, we've seen that over the years, mm -hmm. especially in the political arena. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, even Bill Clinton now yeah. with his mistress, I guess that was good advertising. <laughs> oh, he's still getting the advertising on there. right, yeah. But um, um, branding, but top of mind awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, when when I think of one of your businesses, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I don't know if I could say that. I, uh, Not the name, right? Yeah, and, yeah. But but um, I'm in healthcare. That's it. That's exactly it. right. Mm -hmm. um, I would have choices mm -hmm. with your billboard. You're creating a constant presence, right. a reinforcement to your other advertising. Right. And what that does is, when I'm thinking of healthcare, right. I think of Diane. Right. And so that's that's kind of our key role. Mm -hmm. um, does one medium do it all? Impossible. No. You know, we have different uh, driving patterns. We have different right. um, uh, needs, goals. We, we we go to church, different places, work. But the the billboards are an affordable way mm -hmm. to maintain that constant presence. But the synergy of your entire marketing plan right. and your advertising plan is is what really is effective. And what I have found and see a lot here in in we're we're filmed of course here in Baton Rouge. But again, most of my guests are not from Baton Rouge. Right. And uh, we talk to guests all over the world and all over the country. People fly in and drive in for Diane and in black and white. And what thing I see here, being from IBM, I don't see people understanding the power of advertising in, in this city. And I, I don't know, I, I must be wrong because... Uh, you, you know, um, it, 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 a part of what we do and part of how we train our, our account executives uh -huh. is we're, we are marketers. Mm -hmm. we, we want to teach you and help you reach your goals. Mm -hmm. And if we can sell you a billboard in the process, great. Right. But um, it, we're certainly no New York. Right. We're certainly no Atlanta right. and some of the, the bigger top tens. But we do have a very, very loyal following. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not because they like me or they like Trey. Right. It's because, because it works. It works. And right. so I'm very proud of that. Um, but because you're the vice president, general manager of Baton Rouge. I know you went correct. to Lafayette for a little while. I was in Lafayette. And you came back home as a vice president, general manager right. of the Baton Rouge. And Baton Rouge is a fast, fast growing city. This is home city. for me. It, yeah, it really is. It really is. And, and I've read some great things you've done. You work in the community diligently, uh, doing charities. What's your favorite that you work with us? Can you even say there's yeah, a favorite I think charity? I, oh, really? Yeah. And that's, they're, they're, they're all my little children. Right, and, right. And I wish I could do more. And I, I actually, sometimes you even get spread too thin. But. Mm -hmm. um, how do I single one out? But I'm yeah. very proud of um, the Crime Stoppers board I'm on. Okay. Um, as a criminal justice major, it mm -hmm. was right oh. right up my alley. Right. And I got involved with that about 10 years ago when I moved back. Sid Newman is the president of the Crime Stoppers. And he reached uh, out The police chief was just here a couple of weeks oh, ago. We did good. a show with uh, yeah. his second time on Diane Ayers in Black and White. Yeah, good, yeah. good. Yes, and he's on, he's on our board as I well. I thought so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, Sid, uh, the, there, there was a program he, he worked with at LSU right. about facial recognition mm -hmm. for you, you know um, a death or a homicide years ago where they had they find a body years later right. and LSU like a was cold case. right a, a cold, cold case, case. Yeah. LSU was able to kind of reconstruct this is what the I person saw that would on look TV. like that's right I saw that on television yeah and so we put these billboards up around Louisiana and this person uh, that no one knew who she was unidentified was identified through the billboards and when that happened Sid said all right 
we, let's 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 really get serious about right. this. And and so we, the digital billboards were becoming of age at that point, and and we we partnered with them, and we've got the Amber Alerts, yeah. we've got the um, anything that is um, you, you know law enforcement. Mm -hmm. We're we're ready to go on a moment's notice. One thing I always wanted to one question I had was when uh, a person who's a sexual sexual mm -hmm. abused people comes into your community, especially a child molester, right. don't they have to let the community know? Is that a part of um, Crime Stoppers or is it something No, else? not so much, not okay, so much. Okay, I know that they do have the alerts. If, if, oh, if, sure, yeah. yeah, they've got to register. But I, I talked to some people because I'm thinking about doing a show on it, and I saw all these uh, people who had done sexual assaults and they lived in a friend of mine's community. I don't know how they informed them because you can find it if you go in and look for right. it. Right. But if you don't look for it, I, I don't know if they let yeah, you find it. Yeah, it's scary. You all can see my billboard, Diane Andrews, in black and white. You, you see it on your screen. That's my digital billboard at Blue Bonnet and Airline. I, when I first met with uh, Garth about this, he and Trey, and we, he said he, he was kind of really liked the show and was really, really profound about what the things I'm doing here. He said, but nobody knows about you, Diane. And, you know, and said That's this right. this will really help uh, people to get to know about you. Right. In fact, I've had somebody I was talking to this morning, I saw you on uh, Blue Button Airline. I really like you. So I've had at least four or five people, and that's only been up two weeks. Wow. That, that I know who told me right. t it's such a great location, and we're going to move mine around Baton Rouge right. to that's get right. to hit all the locations. That's it. So I really appreciate uh, Lamar for helping get this done and helping get the word out here about Diane Andrews and Black. Well, we appreciate you. Well, I, w <laughs> it's a mutual respect. That is. And I will have to say, now, tell Tell him about my book, Third Man Out. He read my book. Oh, I did. I did. That was that was that's good. It's a good read. It's a good read. I, I almost uh, texted, texted you. you, you should right, have, that's yeah. right. I, are you sure this fiction is? It was just. I was. I well, was right. I was with IBM. So right. Destiny Morgan. Right. Uh, was Diane. Some of Diane. It was just like yeah. John Grisham. We started right. off writing about what we know. Yeah, but was, I wasn't adopted, and I wasn't in the witness right. protection program, which all right, those things. Right. It was in very there. good. Yeah. So uh, people tend to, I'm doing. I've written a screenplay, and we're going to try to do. Uh, a movie on that. In fact, I had Wonderful. three women in one of my shows today, and everybody was writing a screenplay. So uh, I will say this though, for your your watchers out there yeah. that may not know you or yeah. maybe tuning in for the first time, she does not stop. <laughs> it has been a pleasure getting to know you over the past several months. I really, yeah. I, I, I hey, I was up at three o'clock. <laughs> this, this is, uh, and I do, we do a full day of taping for sure here. Yes, and I have do. a board meeting with my other company tonight. After <laughs> there this. you go. So God has given me the energy of a two-year-old. So I appreciate it. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, Mama, for watching out for <laughs> me up there. So uh, what things would you like to tell the audience, uh, anything else about Lamar, and I know what you do and all right. the organizations. Do you want to mention any other the charities well, you work with? Well, oh, sure, uh, because like I said, they're, they're all list. my babies. Yeah, That's right. Um, well, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm involved with, uh, um, and there's been so many over the years, but uh, the, the, the ones that I'm currently with and have been with for several years is uh, Louisiana Council for Economic Education. Yeah. Um, just a, an incredible organization. Our president is Laura Smith, mm -hmm. and she she may have about half your energy, which is more than most people <laughs> I know, because she she doesn't stop. And yeah. and for the small budget uh, that that we get from the state, right. it's amazing the, the the work we're able to do. Well, if uh, there's someone you want me to highlight that oh, wants to come on the show, wonderful, you know, I will like keep that in mind. We like to shine a light on, oh, sure. on on great organizations, so Thank uh, you. you can give me a who you'd like for me to bring on on right. our next tape and we'll get them on I here. will certainly right. keep that in mind yeah. and uh, that, that would be wonderful exposure. You've grown Baton Rouge because every large city has a vice president and general manager right. the way you're organized That's Lamar correct. advertising, right? And how much have you grown Baton Rouge since you've been back? Oh my goodness, uh, yeah, I think when, um, when I came back it was 03 uh, in 03, 03, 03, I moved back in 03. I, I spent two years in Lafayette right. and four years in Tyler, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I guess that um, I hate to I hate to mention mention our, our revenues, but uh, percentage wise, I think that we've probably grown Baton Rouge in ten years by about twenty five to thirty percent. That's a great. And a record. lot of that With is the economy and, going down. Well, the in some economy of those years, 08 was yeah. uh, was a tough was yeah. a tough year, and I think some of the other Lamar markets and 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 certainly some of the other major cities kind of started to experience that in 07 when mm -hmm. we were still doing great. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's kind of like the fashion trends, Baton Rouge, you know, right. is the last to know. We kind of, but um, it did hit us last. It, it was it was tough. Mm -hmm. Anytime you even have to consider 
laying off right. one of now fortunately we didn't we right. were able to to tweak some other things and it didn't How have many to people do work for Lamar and Baton Rouge and oh, around the country? oh well we have um, our corporate headquarters are here I have 33 employees at my shop and then we have Lamar graphics mm -hmm. which is um, in North Baton Rouge on Beaumont I want to say they have about a hundred employees there oh, wow. but company-wide we have 3300 employees wow. and uh, when I started uh, 25 years ago we had every salesperson in the company at my shop uh, <laughs> for sales training. We, we couldn't even begin to right, do that. Right, today. Yeah. Now, was Charlie Lamar from Baton Rouge because, as you uh, said, Pensacola. Pensacola, Pensacola, Florida. Florida. So that's how did correct. the headquarters get here? Well, um, that's a great question. We moved here in the 50s, but um, Charlie Lamar had a daughter, and uh, she married... Um, uh, Kevin Riley Sr. Oh, okay. And so um, uh, through through that, and, and really Kevin Kevin Sr. was so instrumental in our development and our growth. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he visionary. passed. Absolutely. visionary. Absolutely. And um, uh, it just has continued uh, with, with his family. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Riley Jr. Uh, was our president when I started, and uh, his brother Sean now. Is is at the at the head of the company, and so it's like a family affair. I will say this: we went we went public in August of '96, okay. and we are still. It still feels like a family-run business, and that's a good thing. That is a very good thing. There's not the red tape and the right. bureaucracy, and right. the, um, it's just we we give back to the communities we right. operate in, and we, we're very uh, autonomous. Yeah, and we're able to get things done. And that's what I was getting ready to say. When you can do that, you get things done. That's right. When you're at some big corporations, like turning an elephant around. To um, I will have to say, when I was at IBM, one of the things uh, IBM joint venture with Microsoft, uh -huh. but they didn't take any of the 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 profit or any percentage of the company, and they just Steve Jobs just passed uh, them by with with Apple and the software IBM had their own PC mm -hmm. and uh, but they put their own software on that right. PC and Apple kind of just they never saw it coming out because right. it was a big mainframe company IBM was and still is big blue right. with a big mainframes but now they're number one in the world for global consulting but uh, so but I, IBM is so agile and flexible enough they knew we got to get into something else because we right. lost this market Right. They were copiers too. People don't right. know that they had a copying division. I remember division. that. I yeah, did. they they had a copying division, and then they had the but big main friends. They couldn't see it, and sometimes people don't tell them when they're that big, right. the CEO, what you really need to know. Maybe they don't see it either. All they can see is how many mainframes can I right. sell? Right. Instead of where is this? Where is it going? I need to put computing and communication in the hands of every user right. I can in the world. What, have you seen that Steve Jobs movie? Because it was—I no, will never buy anything from him. Oh my no, God! What a I did monster! Not see that. Just he the, was a the, monster. I've heard that. Oh, he was mean. That. Yes, Steve Jobs. <laughs> I, I, I saw that movie. I would. I, I have a black bear, and they just came out with a new one, and I still I love my black yeah, bear. Yeah, you know yeah. what? I think my next one. I'm going back to the. Black I'm going to show you my new one then. They okay. just came out with an Android. Well, I'm and Android see, I based, be, but oh, okay. I, I like the old Blackberry. It's well, good. they have the old one, but it's different. They call it Blackberry Classic, and then they have the Android that they just came out with. Blackberry Younger to pay for this advertising. <laughs> but uh, it's still got the key. In, in fact, I've got it in there. I've got my personal well, I'm going to show it to you. It's absolutely. got the key because I, I bought one that was just touching. I was zooming all over everywhere. I couldn't, right. you know, and you got, it takes more time. They found that the Quigley board, which is what they call the Blackberry board, is 30% more pr productive right. than a non-keyboard. Wow, that's, that's a yeah. lot. So, um, Anything else that you'd like to say? Well, we're proud of our digital billboards. Right. Um, Lamar has. They're beautiful. Instead of vinyl, explain right. the difference. Well, in digital uh, and vinyl. gosh, the way we've evolved. Yeah. Um, when I started, we were actually hand painting the billboards. Oh wow! If you and I met and we came up with a with a creative design that you liked. If it wasn't the fifth of the month, we're looking at next month before you would even go up. It was so labor intensive, and then the 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 vinyl application yeah. came out, and the turnaround became a lot quicker. And right. um, well, we were pioneers with the digital billboards. We had the first one in Lamar Land was here in Baton Rouge on wow. I ten or College Drive. Yeah. And um, after about three years, we kind of figured it out. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we have continued to grow our digital, and the beauty about that was it so is smart though. Too. Oh well, you know that. Now that you say it, I do remember late at night sometimes right. I'd be driving to see guys up on the uh, rafters painting on those billboards. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, I could tell you a quick story about uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin Riley Sr. Um, uh, I was a sales manager in Baton Rouge, and he was driving down I-10, and my phone rings, and we we had one of these home health care, not home health care, uh, um, uh, home 
uh, fix it. Uh, I forget the name of them, but you know, you call them when you oh, when okay. you're doing your toilet goes yeah, out or yeah. you, you you need gutters. Anyway, yeah. Um, this particular billboard design had mannequins uh -huh. all over the board. Some on the catwalk, some reaching over, and uh, they they were given the illusion they were painting or something. Uh -huh. and, and Kevin Senior calls me and says, God. God, you, you got some uh, guys over there on I-10 at College Drive, and they're not hooked up. Yeah, safety first, God, they're not. I said, oh, <laughs> oh my yes, God. Sir. I said, um, I said, those are mannequins. Oh, my I God. Said, oh, okay, <laughs> carry on. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was That's incredible. great. They look real. I, I, <laughs> they, they look he he, he did not stop. And yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm so blessed to have been he touched. He ought to do an by, undercover boss thing. That would be uh, fun for yeah. him to go and act like he's one of the guys out doing uh, the, the, the old vinyl it, ones. And it really is. Have uh, you seen that show, Undercover Boss? I have, boss? and yeah. I like it. I do indeed. Yeah, I like that. But there's, there's, they're just very family-oriented. Yeah. They care about our employees. And I, I think that and you with, give back. with give family you. first, and I think you see that, and it carries on to our customers, right. and, and it's relationships that's yeah. been the success, I think, to Lamar. And I think to a lot of businesses, uh, at sure. the end of the day, it is that's about it's building about. relationships. At IBM, when I was there, I was always concerned, not what that sales plan said we need to sell, right. but what does this customer need us to, and to, that's to it. give to him? And if you think about that, you'll be successful in marketing and advertising that's all of your correct. life. That's what correct. What does the person really need? Not what you need to sell that's it what he really or she really needs well it's been a pleasure it has been my it's been a pleasure pleasure's. meeting you my yeah. hands are cold but i'm that's warm hearted okay. i'm gonna need that okay there you go. <laughs> well thank you for for your time oh, thank and having you me Garth, on. for coming and thanks my thank pleasure. you for all the work we do together and what you do in the community yeah. and let me know about uh, someone who uh, can come indeed on. and anything i can do we're going to be right back after this commercial with another segment thank you diane andrews in black and white order your copies now of diane andrews latest books Third Man Out, a suspenseful mystery by Diane Andrews, and Gumbo for the Heart. 25 stories of faith, hope, and charity, both available now on Amazon.com. you'll see an HIV positive person's journey. You'll hear us make a telephone call to a Shia Muslim in Baghdad, Iraq. You'll also see the vice president of Lamar Billboard Advertising come in and talk about how advertising can make you more successful. Come on and watch Diane Andrews in Black and White. You'll be happy you did. Thanks for coming back to Diane Andrews in Black and White. As you see, I've changed my attire and I've curled up my hair. So we've got a different look here for the person that I'm interviewing today, which is Frederick Sargent. He is the operations director for Electronic Media Gulf South. Thanks for being, Gulf Coast, thanks for being here. That covers six states, yes, mostly of the Gulf Coast region, Georgia, yes. Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, and uh, and what, Florida, right? Florida, yes, and Florida. So uh, Fred is an old guy when it comes to marketing. He's been doing it about 20 years. He graduated from LSU, born in Alexandria, but now he lives in, and graduated elementary school in Baton Rouge. So he's really a Baton Rouge native, pretty much. But he's got a very interesting product. And you, as you know, this is part of my entrepreneur series, and this is part of advertising. We just had uh, the first segment of the show was with the vice president of Lamar Advertising, which is a course displays outdoor billboards and Fred does some of that also he's using uh, walking billboards and that could be inside or outside and he's also doing advertising e-blast with the electronic media and you are reaching 3.2 million people mm -hmm. on your e-blast so, so tell it all your databases that cover mm -hmm. when those 3.6 million every email you shoot out is hitting about approximately 3.2 Two million people, is that uh, correct? No, 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 no. Okay. We, we have it broken down a little bit more. Uh, by state? Than that. Or? Uh, well, by city, by state, by um, religion, if you only want religious information, mm -hmm. if you only want uh, information in reference to jazz concerts mm -hmm. or in re reference to urban concerts, um, elect, uh, what, elected officials and voters. Mm -hmm. So we have the different categories that you could actually target to, similar to a post office. Okay, so uh, what if I wanted everybody? 
My, uh, well, yes, like this could, television send, show, we're doing yeah, some we e-blasts. I want everybody. Do yeah, I get everybody? It, yeah, we could send it to all, or we could send it to just a very targeted. Because some, some of the businesses that we deal with are only localized. Right. So with those guys being localized, they only want to market in, in a 10-mile, 20-mile radius. Right. We can narrow down. Doesn't do them a lot, of, a lot of good, but me, me being statewide. And then we go to YouTube also, so yes. everybody can see us all over your yes. six so, states. Yeah, something like that region. definitely yeah. needs to go to the masses. So tell me, how did you start this, Fred? You, you graduated from LSU with a degree in marketing, I think. Yes, yes. And for 20 years you've been in marketing. Yes. And you've been doing this 12 years, I think you told me. Yes. I, I started off, actually started off in radio. Oh, okay. Doing radio, doing sales. And um, as time went on, I realized that I wasn't as effective as I thought I could be mm -hmm. um, um, for the clients I was dealing with because we're doing radio. Mm -hmm. So I moved to the Houston market, mm -hmm. um, teamed up with some guys there, and we started doing email marketing, basically mm -hmm. trying to do electronic flyer distribution. Okay. And once we got all that going on, um, I said, man, well, this is cool, but I got a little more ambitious and said, we need to do this a little further. Right. When my partners didn't think so, I thought so, so I went a little further with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we just been going on since then and growing the databases and uh, doing electronic flyer distribution, which is a little bit different from the standard email marketing campaigns that most people are used to. Uh -huh. How is it different? Uh, now, well, we don't do a lot of uh, like newsletters, uh -huh. things of that nature. We literally send your flyer to this database. Uh, mm -hmm. Our first our first contract was actually um, for going green mm -hmm. because we didn't we didn't do no paper. We were all, we were all electronic. Uh -huh. And then we started getting into other green products uh -huh. um, like our flying billboards with the drones. Now let's uh, talk about that. That's mm -hmm. something who would have thought, right? <laughs> uh, we hear about drones, and there's some good and some bad of drones. They need yeah. more legislation. Yeah. Legislation, as you said, you've yeah. been working in Washington mm -hmm. yes. to come up with safety regulations because kids yes. are flying drones around now, yes. not just over in Iraq and Afghanistan. <laughs> so tell us no. about uh, real quick what you want. Do, do you want to give a website out, and, and yes. do you want to talk about what what you charge for e blast? Or you just want them to go straight to the website and see how much uh, it costs. Well, well uh, both. We'll do okay. it all. Okay. Uh, email. Uh, well, with our website, our website is actually at emediagc.com. Emediagc.com. Emediagc.com, okay. and that'll take them to more information about what we do and how we do it. Uh, with the email campaigns, mm -hmm. those are actually one dollar per thousand. One dollar per thousand, a lot yeah. cheaper than a, a, a postage, postage stamp, stamp or yes. a thousand. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, for sure. Uh, so many. And so yeah. we, we we've been trying to make sure we get that right. Uh, our walking billboard campaigns, they'll find more information about that. Our walking billboards. I think that is so unique. And again, he's going to be doing flying billboards with drones. Yeah. So let's be looking for that, but get out of the way until they get these safety measures. So thanks for being with us, Fred, today. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> Diane Andrews in black and white. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. you'll see an HIV positive person's journey. You'll hear us make a telephone call to a Shia Muslim in Baghdad, Iraq. You'll also see the vice president of Lamar Billboard Advertising come in and talk about how advertising can make you more successful. Come on and watch Diane Andrews in black and white. You'll be happy you did. your copies now of Diane Andrews' latest books, Third Man Out, a suspenseful mystery by Diane Andrews, and Gumbo for the Heart, 25 stories of faith, hope, and charity, both available now on Amazon.com. <laughs>